Hey everyone, Kuro the Artist here, and welcome back to another Ben 10 Breakdown. Ultimate Alien's a very love it or hate it kind of show, and it's also one with a pretty rough start. Within the first four episodes, there's two really good and relatively poor episodes. But unlike Alien Force, this series began with less of a narrative focus. Even the general concept, the introduction of Ultimate Aliens, feels a bit aimless. But starting with this episode, we finally get the ball rolling on the first season's story arc, which is Agrigore's retrieval of the Andromeda 5. By the way, stick around until the end to see the winner of our Stalker Redesign Contest, which we mentioned in the last video where I was joined by Kellen Goff to help break down the episode. But if this is your first breakdown and you're curious about how my rating system works, there's a detailed description down below, along with a link to all my previous episodes, but by all means watch this video first, I'm sure you'll still enjoy it. I'm still streaming on Twitch every Tuesday at 2pm EST, working my way through Alien Force the video game, so make sure you follow us down there so that you don't miss out on the streams. Now, let's get back to the breakdown. On May 21st, 2010, Charlotte Fullerton gave us the episode Escape from Agrigore. After a brief altercation with Dr. Animo, the main trio are led back to Bellwood when Galapagos is going on a fake rampage in order to get the attention of Ben. He tells him the story of the Andromeda 5 where he and four other aliens were captured from their home planet by the Osmosian tyrant Agrigore in order for him to absorb their powers for a mysterious purpose. <laughs> First time we see the mind control headbands. Not gonna lie, wouldn't have expected these to return eventually. But this is our introduction to them. Forearms looks like he's missing his lower stripes here. Now his stripes are black. I've got the Yeti's mind. So Dr. Animo has somehow escaped the null void now and has gone back to his usual experimentation sticker. He's taking control of this Yeti. Yeti's going toe to toe with the Tetra Man too. Animation's looking pretty great. Ultimate Alien's been handling forearms very well so far. Now Animo's in a synchronization with the Yeti, where everything he does physically, the Yeti also does. But earlier, he seems to just be implying thoughts, so I guess he can switch between whether he copies Dr. Animo's moves or just bends to his general will. Dr. Animo! Dude! Stop saying your name. They're just casually taken apart as machines. I don't think we've seen Gwen levitate things like this too often. Usually she lifts it up on a platform, similar to what she's doing to Kevin and herself right now. But this is pretty cool. Which shall turn anyone within the range of its blast into a Yeti! <laughs> yeah, they've definitely dialed him back to how he was in Classic. Although now that we've been through so much with the trio, he seems so much less threatening. And I guess that's kind of the point. But it's just a little strange to see him take on threats like this this far into the series. But someone's gotta get the job done. Seriously? That's your plan? See, even Ben's like, what the fuck, man? I like that we see them in winter outfits, though. I love whenever characters change outfits. Kind of reminds you of the old days. What, stupid plans? Now they're being kind of on the nose with it, but I think that helps sell the charm. Even they are so over Dr. Animo. <laughs> Ben's always going brainstorm around Dr. Animo. Since he keeps sending out waves in order to control the Yeti, it's like he has to keep re-upping his control or else it'll fade off. So right now, it's like the Yeti's starting to zone back into his own natural state of mind. <laughs> So now Ben's in control. I wonder if this is an Omnitrix thing or a Brainstorm thing. Because the Omnitrix is now glowing in conjunction to the Yeti's headband turning green. But without Brainstorm, I don't think he'd be able to do this in the first place. So it's like Ben and the Omnitrix are working together on this one. Sick of no! It's a little cruel to just take control of the Yeti right back. I feel like Ben should have just instantly let the Yeti free and then kicked Dr. Animo's ass himself. But maybe he wants to give Yeti the glory of doing that. I'm still paying for that. Dr. Animo's buying his machines now instead of making them. Getting lazy with it, Doc. But that also makes sense since Agrigore has access to these later on. You are free. Oh, now he's using his electrokinesis again. We first saw that in Inferno as well. My bomb is still going to go off. Taken care of. Pick up in Sector 7G. They're so professional now. Why are you guys even out there? Hey, don't berate them for being out here. They just did your job for you. His bomb was about to go off. Although all that stuff was fun with the Dr. Animo thing, the episode really could have just started right here. We're live at the scene of destruction. This is the same reporter that was in Duped. Both him and Will are voiced by John DiMaggio, if I'm not mistaken. Oh no, that was Yuri Lowenthal. He was John when it was Duped, but now he's Yuri. You can sort of hear it if you listen close. Ben, any comment on Will Harang's editorials? He says you're a menace. An alien creature has been going on a rampage. The voice, not so much, but you can hear Yuri's style of inflictions. I wonder if he was pitched down appears to be an alien creature has been going on a rampage. Yeah, they did. They pitched him down. If I didn't know that was Yuri, I would have just thought that was John. Yeah, Galapagos is trying so hard to be threatening. Although, that is pretty scary from the human's perspective. He smacked that missile. That's some good reflexes. 
Terra Spin's powers are one of the most unique for an alien, since he doesn't just manipulate wind, he transforms his body in order to do so as well. Although I'm not sure how I feel about his legs merging together to do it. With our 5YL design, we had him suck his legs back into the holes, just like his head, and then his tail would become the third pedal. But this is still pretty awesome. I love the way it looks. <laughs> All of these aliens are super OP before Ben obtains them. He whips that thing out pretty fast, and it just activates with his mind powers again. They don't even bother trying to make it look like they have a method for the Ultimatrix. Like, I'm starting to really believe in-universe he activates it with his mind, because that's like the number one method so far. He rarely ever touches the dial. <laughs> Ice versus wind. Galapagus's wind effect looks very similar to Big Chill's breath effect. But when they're using them at the same time, they give Galapagus these little rings to differentiate the two. But these rings make it look like it's a Sonorosian attack, like Echo Echo. He's turning himself up. Chill. The blue rushing background from the final battle part one has returned. Yeah, I'm still not sold on the blue color. I guess it does make things different. Big Chill's ultimate transformation is animated very well. He's also the first ultimate alien we've seen to be used twice. So Ben's already doubling up on his forms before we get the full set. Oh, I forgot he can make fireballs with his hands as well. I actually really like that power. When's the one that's been leading the battle so far? Don't you think it's kind of weird how this creature hasn't actually harmed anyone? Not weird, just lucky. Gwen's right, but I would have agreed with Kevin too initially. It does look like he's trying to hurt everybody. You think it's another baby? I mean, it's possible. It's not like the baby they ran into earlier is the only baby out there in the universe. In fact, statistically, you'd think it happened more often. I am never changing a giant diaper again. Does this imply that he had to off screen last time? That would be nuts. <laughs> A lot of the animation in this episode is done very well too. It's giving me high hopes. I hope it continues through the whole episode. Even just impacting with the car and having the glass shattered. I don't know, maybe the latest episodes have really lowered my standards. <laughs> At least we're getting some new powers for Ultimate Big Chill too. Like that. I forgot he could do half of this stuff. Remember that dragon we fought who turned out to be an alien with a damaged translator? A lot of callbacks happening this episode. This is a very continuity-heavy story, or at least with the references they're giving it is. Universal translators. Maybe we should try them now. I'm surprised they're not on right now. They seem to be automatically activated in every episode, but for this one, for some reason, they're off. Like, it should never be a decision to have to turn them on. They should always be on, and usually are. Maybe they had to turn them off for, like, some type of off-screen adventure or something? Yeah, let's let's just say that. No idea how to find you. Oh, great Ben Tennyson. Oh, great Ben Tennyson. Also, good thing they did the switch of going back to regular Big Chill before they go back to Ben. Like, why even introduce that concept if they're not going to use it? But here you get a very clear difference between regular and ultimate Big Chill, which is basically just a color swap with some extra flaming details around him. This might be by, like, an evolution standpoint. Big Chill's base biological form is already pretty advanced and doesn't need to be upgraded that much in order to survive. Whereas some aliens like Swampfire and Echo Echo get a completely new makeover to the point where they're unrecognizable. So yeah, I'm going to say Big Chill has the evolutionary advantage naturally. That's how I'm going to deal with the design. Thank Adwaitcha, it worked. Mention of Adwaitcha. Yeah, a lot of continuity nuggets in here. Come on, people. Here comes the crowd of people. I'm glad they haven't forgotten that Ben's famous. But hey, look. Look who we have here. It's Pierce's girlfriend again. This girl's stalking him. I'm gonna pretend there's this little secret plotline of her stalking Ben and trying to get with him. Like everything, dyeing her hair blonde, hooking up with Pierce, it's all just to get to Ben. There do be crazy fans like that out there. Violence is not the way of my people. So Galapagos' name comes from the Galapagos Islands, where they have these giant tortoises that can live up to 160 years old. So even just having the electricity going and the smoke coming on this one still shot, it's a very good looking episode. I am not here of my own free will. Why should we trust this joker? You know, every time this happens to them, one of these three always has to play devil's advocate and ask why do they have to help this person? It's like at this point, helping people who ask for it is your job, or at least that's been your track record. Like, I feel like we're at the point where we can stop trying to come up with reasons for helping people because more often than not they end up doing it anyways i am from a peaceful planet called aldabra aldabra is from another group of islands the aldabra atoll which is also home to another big tortoise the aldabra giant tortoise i ate grass all day yeah i do something with grass all day myself love the way these structures are shaped though very tall but flat trees debating philosophy 
and enjoying the great gift of life. These turtles are what Redditors think they are. I freaking love these turtles. I'm just, this is, they're the best. Your people fight constantly. I really like that they animate the grass splitting as they hover around too. Especially looks good in this shot right here with the pan and grass animation and all that. So how did you know how to fight? I learned it in prison. That would be the place to do it. So this is quite the entrance, but what is this? Did he just jump out of his ship? He's very high up. But now we get our second look at Agrigor, who was first teased at the end of fame. He's gone down from having six nubs to four, but he's still looking like a badass. With the amazing ability to absorb matter and energy, much like your metal friend here. Well, Galapagos picked up on Kevin's powers pretty fast. Although, if you were imprisoned by someone who could do that, I guess you'd be on the watch out for similar abilities as well. Also, I know Agrigor's design isn't anybody's favorite design, but I always thought he looked pretty great. He's one of those characters where a simpler design is an advantage, because the details that are present are pretty solid. I'm just not a huge fan of the pants, though. Maybe make them brown or a different shade of red. The blue is what breaks the design for me. Life is not the way of my people. Aw, oh, and they just drained him dry right there. You know, you'd think this would be enough because he only needed some of their power, right? Sucks that he captures Galapagos too. But here you get a really good look at their body structure. They do have toes and fingers and all of that. Knees and joints, they're all hidden by the thick flaps of their flesh. Run! Or fly. Ugh. Oh, this used to freak me out a little bit. It reminds me of trypophobia. Officially, it's the aversion or repulsion to objects like honeycombs and sponges that have repetitive patterns or clusters of small holes. Like, here's an example. I Honestly, it's a pretty normal looking thing. There's really nothing gross or weird about it at all, but for certain people like myself, it gives me a bit of the heebie-jeebies. I can't explain it. It's like, ugh. Check it out on Google if you want to know more. <laughs> What do you want with me? It's always so tricky to animate weapons at this angle and make it look good. This doesn't look too bad though. And the Agrobots. I know they're called Agrobots, but I don't remember if that was mentioned in the show anywhere, so I'm gonna be on the lookout for that. So rough with him. Never seen anything like it. So here we got Bivalvin, who we met in fame, and now are introduced to the rest of the Andromeda 5. This guy here is rad. His name comes from the Arabic word thunder, which is pretty cool. I like that he's constantly squishing right now. I don't think they keep that up though. It can talk. It's affecting him too. Right here we have Pandor, like Pandora's box. One of the rare aliens with an accent. Our abilities don't work in here either. Andreas is strong. And Andreas, like Andreas' fault. So all of these characters here are voiced by D. Bradley Baker, except for Galapagos, who's voiced by John. But this is one of the episodes that really shows off D's range. He's all of these characters, plus Big Chill, and Brainstorm, and the Yeti, and Forearms too, and they all sound distinct from each other. This is like D's episode to shine. He can bust out of war! Not as long as that thing suppressing our powers. So I guess I can understand how this thing can suppress all of their power power kind of things, but when it comes to their raw strength, you know, Andreas should be just naturally strong. I wouldn't say that's a power, so this must be an overall biological dampener because being strong isn't like a power like shooting lasers or flying you're just strong what is this place what does it look like amphibian face by valvin knows about the word amphibian although this could just be translated for us as the audience jail prison the big house and all of those things too i wonder what he's really saying restricting another being's freedom unthinkable galapagos knows what's up andreas thinks turtle face is spy for agricor based on what though blunt played Dumb. Better not be lying. Man, they're all ganging up on him for no reason right now. You don't have lying where you come from either. Rad's voice filter is really cool as well. He's lucky he can walk erect. Well, that's because he's not wearing gym shorts. Agrigo captured each of us from our home planet. He absorbed my friend's abilities back home, but he seemed only able to use them at a much lesser strength. So this is built off the notion that in the classic series, Kevin's powers were much weaker than Ben's. I've got all your powers! <laughs> Too bad each one of those is only a tenth as powerful as mine. But I was always under the assumption it's because he absorbed ten powers at once, therefore each section was not a full strength. Whereas when he absorbed each alien individually, he was just as strong. <laughs> I'm taking all your alien powers. 
So I felt like Ultimate Alien misinterpreted that as all Osmosian powers only absorb a tenth of the strength no matter what. But that's how they're treating it from this point forward, so I guess this is the new canon. Why would Aquacore kidnap us? Why didn't he just drain us on the spot? Man's asking the real questions. Not waiting around to find out. Yeah, you kinda were though. If you had this thing the whole time and were ready to go, why are you just now waiting for Galapagos to show up to try this? Where'd you even get this? Kinda has the same face as the Acrobots too, so perhaps he swiped it off of one of them. That was way too easy. You're not my leader. This is a pretty cool sequence. It's a very similar effect of the going ultimate thing, except it's purple. Our powers are back! Yeah, I'm not a fan of them calling their natural abilities powers, because it's just natural for them. At least to me, powers are an additional ability on top of what you can naturally do. That's how I like to classify them. Like for us as humans, I wouldn't say we have like the power to grow our hair or to regenerate our skin after it gets cut open. To us, that's just part of life. So like if we were power dampened in this room and someone cut us open, would we not be able to heal? Or if we cut our hair, would it not grow anymore? You're welcome. My Valvin also seems to have a different voice in this episode. I want to go home and I am two minutes from lunch. What does it look like, amphibian face? Call it what you want. Like he doesn't have that deep bubbly filter anymore. Behind me. You stay behind me. Pandora is just full of confrontation and aggression. He does not understand the worthiness of teamwork over here. Yeah. It's pretty smart. This is why everyone needs to follow by Valvin. This way. Just for this one shot, you can see Pandora's vent glowing. That looks really cool. I wonder where they're all going. Well, that's not subtle. This episode does give us a look into Ben's future alien forms without Ben having to use them, though. So it's a cool insight into abilities that Ben will gain soon. We must have hit an asteroid. That sounded like Greg Sipes. Asteroid? That's bad, right? You know, I was gonna say Andrea sounds very similar to Volcanus, but that's D in there, not John. So there's some overlap between the two vocal talents there. This isn't just a prison. In space! You know, this fact that this shot is drawn and it's not a CG model, this is pretty impressive. Wait, no, is this a CG model? I feel like right here looks very CG, but initially when they're going away from it, maybe the window is drawn and it's pasted on top of the CG model. Yeah, that must be what it is. Yeah, okay, yeah, this is definitely CG. Fooled me for a quick second, though. There's nowhere to go out there. We can't just make a run for it. I say we come in view of this ship. Nobody knows we've escaped yet. We should keep our advantage as long as we can. Yeah, by Valvin's definitely right in this scenario. You're still trapped inside that suit. That's true, I didn't even think about that. I guess it'd be hard to tell, though, because Andreas also looks like he's in a suit. So Andreas looks like this just because that's his species, but Pandora is actually inside of a containment suit, and they're both standing right next to each other. <laughs> wow, Andreas. Andreas just disappears in this shot. Oh, Galapagos. Every bad guy has to have a big old chair to sit in. No, we haven't gotten a whole lot of Agrigor in this episode yet either. It's a pretty good explosion for the door. It's a good thing those were robots. Oh, this is a great shot. When he's looking at him through the eyeball, but then he squints and then turns to his regular eye color. In a combo attack between Bivalvin and Rad here, between their water and electricity. A lot of really good backgrounds in this ship, too. And it looks like Galapagos ended up going with Bivalvin. Smart move. Love how the water is getting kicked up underneath his air currents, too. And he's got fingers! Sometimes, though, they pop out of his little fins. Mayday! Any plumbers in the vicinity? Any plumbers. I love that. <laughs> This is a pretty notable error. When Galapagos turns around, he has the Omnitrix symbol. And it's animated on there too, it's there for multiple frames. But he still has the white eyes. If you and your little friends... Oh, good old Greg's here. This is Magister Prior Galil of the Plumbers. Prior Galil's back too. He was last shown in Dark Star Rising. Yeah, I'm loving how connected this episode is. Makes seeing the whole series so far very rewarding. They received your distress call. And this is a very ambitious shot. It looks pretty good when I'm going like this, but in motion, the frame rate is just a bit too slow. Yeah, you see that? Not too bad though. 
I can't tell if he looks a lot paler or if he just seemed darker because it was always nighttime last time we saw him. The suit also doesn't have the little plug here anymore. The distress call was a computer error. Won't mind if I have a look around. Also, even right here, the backgrounds look really good. There's a fair amount of detail in this episode. Is the power dampener back on? Because if so, wouldn't his floating also be considered a power? Like, what, what constitutes a power when you're turning powers off? That always bothers me. And what do we have here? Yeah, the power dampener does seem to be on since Galil's holding it right now. Code T22 dash. <laughs> Oof. And he's dead. Agrigor straight up murdered him. Poor J.K. Simmons. He comes back just to die. Andreas don't give a fuck. See, all this animation of it coming apart is great, too. You can see all the wires and piping in the ceiling come down. And the motion blur on Andreas' pistons. Oh, Galapagos. Turtle face. Agrigor's got him. Stop smashing open the shit. I like breathing. This man still got lungs. Goes to show you never truly know what an alien's made of. He's right behind me. In here. When Osmosians absorb the energy, we only gain one tenth of that creature's abilities. Yeah, see, that was that was never really true until right now. I built a machine back on my own planet. Why is he telling them this? That will allow me to absorb all of your powers. Looks like Bivalvin's having some performance issues. As Galapagos has the power. Power dampener. Uh oh, betrayal. Turtle face neutralized your powers. Now, these agrobots are strong enough to throw all of these different aliens on the ground. Between that and Greg's spear, just one shot in Galil. Greg's really making himself up to be a threat right now. You promised to release me if I helped you capture the others. I lied. I lied too. That's pretty smart. So Galapagos is using the power neutralizer on Greg. The trio should really get a hold of a couple of these. It'd solve a lot of their problems. You can't handle the wind. Kind of looks like the stripes in the shell are transparent right here. Yeah, in fact, I think they are. That's interesting. Oh, and there's a familiar ship. You won't get far. This is a cool shot how we see Greg through the broken glass of the monitor he smashed. Everybody all right? We've got to split up. We stay with the escape pod. Suit yourself. So we know what Bivalvin ends up doing because we saw his story in fame. I love how this is slightly out of order, though. It makes it neat. And I haven't seen any of them since. So his whole story was just broadcasted live on TV. It would have been neat if they did something with that. Like the whole world goes on a search for all these aliens now. Bivalvin, we helped him get home. And now it's your turn. Just one more thing. Gotta collect them. So I'm seeing the reflection split open, but nothing's really forming except for this light. Is this where the light came from last time he used this? Yeah, last time he was scanning aliens, it came from the center core of the Ultimatrix. Here it's coming from the dial. Okay, here we actually see a structure that was formed. I wonder if that was supposed to be here with the animation originally split and they forgot to add that layer. DNA. But this is cool. They animated the hologram coming in. Looks like a combination of digital and traditional effects and it spins around in seemingly full color too. We've never seen holograms displayed like this before. Scan complete. And then the hologram shrinks down so that we get a quick sample of all of Ben's active transformations. Well, most of them. We got Humongousaur, Lodestar, who has more definition on his mouth than needed. Chromastone, Swampfire shows up, covered by Big Turtle Boy. Jet Ray, Diamond Head. Seeing Diamond Head next to Chromastone with them both sharing a texture is quite the trip. Wrath shows up, missing his white fur on his neck. Big Chill, who we saw earlier. Alien X. He looks most like an actual hologram. This is probably foreshadowing to the Forge of Creation when we learn that this transformation is locked away. Brainstorm here and Upchuck, Spider Monkey, and Echo Echo. So pretty much the whole Alien Force 10, plus Upchuck, Wrath, Lodestar, and Diamond Head. Transformations not shown are Water Hazard, Way Big, Cannon Bolt, and Forearms. Sweet. Can't thank you plumbers enough. Who says you're going home? Guess who? So this must all be stolen from Galil when he killed him, because all of his stuff was still on the ship. So now we're finally starting to get into the story arc of Ultimate Alien. I'm gonna start off by giving this a plot of a four. It was a nice change of pace to get an episode episode outside of the main trio, and I think that the Andromeda 5 were interesting enough to hold the episode on their own. I think this sets up everything you need to know about the plot going forward, and it's not completely done just as an info dump. You do get to see all of the plot unfolding through the eyes of the characters involved. I think everything is great except for some of the scenes 
in between when we're getting that information. It just has that hint of episode padding that does break up the pacing a bit. But overall, I'd say it's a pretty great episode. And like I said, the Dr. Animo scene at the beginning was pretty nice, but I felt like if you cut that, it would give the episode more room to develop the plot a little bit more. I just feel like this episode's biggest strength is figuring out all of the information in a very fun way. But outside of that, the prison scenes aren't really as interesting. The characterizations is going to get a 5 though. All the Andromeda 5 have their own personalities, and I love how Galapagos is written. I think he might be my favorite of the Andromeda 5 just because of this episode, and this sets the stage for what we're gonna learn about the other characters later on. Greg, we still didn't get that much development for him, but that will come at a later time. And I like how the main trio has so much experience with their job that they shut down Dr. Animo's scheme with such ease, and they were pretty well equipped to handle Galapagos if he was a real threat after all. Visuals can get another 5. There was a lot of great animation in here, and I love the designs of the Andromeda 5 as well. They all really break away from the standard humanoid shape, and I like how they all have a power based on a certain element, but it's not something they go out of their way to explain, you just gotta kinda catch on to it. But any insight into a species' home worlds is interesting, and although it's very simple, I like the look of Aldabra. But you got to see a lot of creative uses for these aliens' powers, and it gives you a taste of what Ben could do with them in the future, and seeing all five of these characters interact, they were all pretty pretty expressive, and made the world of Ben 10 feel a lot bigger. Importance has to be a 5, this is like the key episode to explain everything going forward, and entertaining, I'll give it a 4. This episode's just good enough to earn all those other points, but it's still overall just a giant lore dump, it's just very cleverly disguised, but I feel like that also makes this episode less rewatchable, and I don't know, there's just something about this episode that doesn't quite click like an episode that would have a 5 would. But either way, a 23 out of 25 is a fantastic score, I'm glad that Ultimate Alien starting to ramp back up. Let's hope they continue this till the end of season one and take a look at the final thoughts. So as I mentioned before, Bivalvin's voice switches in this episode than how it originally was in the pilot. But while I was editing, I noticed his voice kept on changing in this very episode as well. Sometimes he sounds very raspy and gruff. Never seen anything like it. Each of us from our home planets. It means big rock. Agrigor's got him. And other times he has a very clean, commanding voice. What does it look like, amphibian face? We stay with the escape. Pod. It's our only way off this world. So counting fame, we now have heard by Valvin with three different voices. And ironically, Water Hazard doesn't sound like any of them. Water Hazard! I was going for big chill, but I still think I can cool you off. Let's also take a look at last week's poll. Between the Andromeda 5, the one that got the most votes was Andreas, who is the DNA donor for Ben's transformation, Armadrillo. Although looking at the results, they are all around the same percentage. Andreas definitely has the lead, but overall, it's pretty evenly divided. For this week's poll, I want to try a little experiment. Who do you think has the best introductory episode? While this may seem very similar to last week's poll, I still feel like there is a difference in these questions. So let me know what you think in the community tab when this poll goes live. Now let's take a look at the results of the stalker contest. Now, we had a lot of great submissions here, and I collected about 58 of them, I believe. And while I want to talk a lot about them, I don't want to drag this section out too far. Many of them had some really solid ideas going for them, like butterflies, lords, Oscars, hotlines, and cans. I really love the artwork of Blue Spock, so I gotta give credit to that. Amez did a pretty great design too, and it's funny how they included an alternative version with the standard UAF red and silver color scheme. Donnie K9 has done another great piece here, with the actual Will Harang robot head looking bad ass. Crystal's got a great idea too, with the idea of making it similar to a microphone, as he is a news anchor. Shady Faze's holographic face has a neat touch to it too, but for the longest time, Mana Freezes took the top spot for me. It was one of the first ones I saw, and it was so sleek but amusing. You can even see Will's initials incorporated in the design, and I like how it's Omniverse harangue as well. But in the end, I gotta give it to Creature Feature as the winner. It's a perfect balance of detailed while still keeping the design slimmed down and simple. The shape of the plating implies many different ways that weapons can be incorporated, as shown with a few examples shown on the side. The leg shape is very satisfying, and I like the shape that the feet's plating gets shifted upwards to reveal more weapons. Will's face projected on the front looks really cool too, but even without that, the design looks very alive. Great job, creature feature. I'll be contacting you shortly about your prize. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's breakdown. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your weekend, and as always, keep it fizzy.